New Zealand, located in the southwestern Pacific Ocean, known for its dramatic terrain and fascinating culture. After we put on a dancing shoes for the haka, we wore hard hats for some serious work at the third annual South to South Learning Workshop. The workshop was held in Wellington, New Zealand's capital city, with stunning views and vibrant city life. Located at the edge of Pacific and Australian tectonic plates, Wellington is exposed to earthquakes and a range of geohazards. But it's not just Wellington, most of New Zealand is exposed to these disasters. And to build resilience against these, New Zealand has developed a holistic approach to geohazard risk management in transport sector. Our approach in New Zealand has been very much one of looking at the whole process from the governance, the systems, how we identify risks, how we design, operate, maintain, knowing there's still going to be some residual risk. How do we prepare ourselves to handle those? They have a very advanced load asset management system. They look at the, not only the load, but the infrastructure as a whole to do the planning. So we wanted to add the learning component in this uh, workshop. This is a global framework. The workshop brought together participants from South Asian countries and Pacific Islands of Samoa and Tonga to find out how New Zealand protects its people and infrastructure against these natural hazards. One of the reasons for New Zealand's resilient transport is its strong institutional framework. One of the, the key initiatives that we're trying to put into play is really the interface of infrastructure with people and communities and welfare. On the third day of the workshop, the team visited GNS Science to find out how it translates science for the benefit of its people and for a safer New Zealand using risk modelling and risk-based planning. We're the geological survey organisation for the country, uh, which means that we have four strategic themes aiming at this vision of a cleaner, safer, prosperous New Zealand. We managed to reduce the time frame significantly in being able to provide information to the agencies who have to make these decisions as to whether to warn or not. The shorter that time frame, the quicker they can get warnings out and the chances of us saving more lives is, is much higher. The most significant piece of work that we've seen in the, in the, in the past few years was the implementation of the one network road classification system. That has moved the integration of asset management and resilience ahead quite a bit. And just ahead of us now is Bridge 25, retaining the wall here and mechanically stabilised slope. One key aspect of the workshop was a field visit to Transmission Gully and the Manavatu Gorge projects. We are very happy that you guys uh, came to have a look at, at what is going to be one of the most important roading projects in New Zealand. Towards the end of the workshop, the country members shared the progress on their action plans from 2017 to 2018 and new action plans for 2019 and beyond. We have learned so much from the New Zealand regarding the bioengineering. In the New Zealand, there is so much coordination between the various departments. They have very good access management system and also they incorporate this resilient construction into the geohazard management. I'm really impressed to see the resilience achieved by New Zealand in response to the geohazards such as earthquakes and landslides. They've come in and they've seen that a small country have been able to assemble the right people, the right tools to have a vision and take it forward. My hope is that they themselves will go and take that vision, collect the right information to make the right decisions to help prevent the interruptions in the network caused by geohazards. Thank you.